Hey guys, today we will be speaking about Frances White Ellis. Frances White Ellis was a British civil servant in the Madras Presidency and a scholar of Tamil and Sanskrit. Ellis became a writer in the East India Company service at Madras in 1796. In 1809, collector of land customs in the Madras Presidency and in 1810, collector of Madras. Before seeing who Ellis is and what he has done, we should know about Dravidian languages. So, the Dravidian languages are a language family spoken by more than 215 million people, mainly in southern India and northern Sri Lanka. It is also spoken in South Asia. Since the colonial era, there have been small but significant immigrant communities outside South Asia in Mauritius, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Britain, Australia, and the United States. Though some scholars have argued that the Dravidian languages may have been brought to India by migration from the Iranian Plateau in the 4th or 3rd millennium BCE, or even earlier, the Dravidian languages cannot be easily connected to any other language family and could well be indigenous to India. Now we'll see how Ellis made efforts for the development of Dravidian languages. In 1816, Alexander D. Campbell suggested the existence of a Dravidian language family in his grammar of the Telugu language, in which he and Francis W. Ellis argued that Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Tulu, and Korava descended from a common non-Indo-European ancestor. Ellis is the first scholar who classified the Dravidian languages as a separate language family. Robert Caldwell, who is often credited as the first scholar to propose a separate language family for South Indian languages, acknowledges Ellis's contribution in his preface to the first edition of a comparative grammar of the Dravidian or South Indian family of languages. Now we'll see about St. George College and its press. While stationed at Madras, Ellis became interested in the history and languages of India. He was a member of the member of the Madras Literary Society and the founder of the College of Fort St. George at Madras, an institution which had both British and Indian members. The college was founded in 1812 and the next year Ellis also helped set up the college press by supplying it with a printing press and Tamil typewriters. The government of Madras supplied the paper. Ellis purchased English typewriters and printing ink for the press cheaply. The press commenced publishing in 1813. Before Ellis's death in 1819, the press published a Tamil grammar primer, Ilakkana Surukkam, a Tamil translation of Uttarakandam of Ramayana, both by Chittambala Desikar. Ellis's own translation and commentary of Thirukural and five Telugu works, Campbell's grammar with Ellis's Dravidian proof, Tales of Vikrama, a translation of Panchatantra. Ellis left a great legacy. Ellis died at Ramnath of cholera on 10th March 1819. When Ellis died in Ramnath, he left some of his papers philological and political to Sir Walter Elliot, on whose death they passed to G.U. Pope who had them placed in the Bodleian Library at Oxford. According to Sir Walter, many of Ellis's unpublished works were lost when they were burned by the cook of the Madurai collector, Ruth Petrie. Ellis did not publish them earlier because he wanted to do so only after becoming a ripened scholar at 40 years. As an administrator, Ellis was well liked by his Indian subjects. His grave at Dindukal bears two inscriptions, one in English and other in Tamil. The English inscription reads, Dalit activist Eothi Das has created Ellis as being the forerunner of Tamil revivalism in the 19th century. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.